Good afternoon or morning, depending on where you are joining from. I'm Will, CEO of BMI Imaging Systems, and today I'm going to be walking you through our microfiche scanning process, hence why it is called the BMI microfiche scanning process, because it's specific to us. So I'm going to start right away here. People are going to be joining in, but I figure it's one, one central, so I'll get going as people continue to join. So the purpose of today's webinar is to illustrate the steps in a microfiche scanning project, address any concerns or answer questions if they come up, and then of course, get you excited about scanning your microfiche. You think, why am I excited about scanning fiche? Because it's a great move from analog to digital, and this is how we would do it if you decide to work with us. Nuts and bolts before we get into the, the real meat of it. Uh, on the, I think it's going to be on the right side of your screen, the classic Zoom <clears throat> little panel. If some of you could raise your hand, if you can hear me, that would let me know that everything is working well and uh, all participants can hear me. I have a few folks doing that. Fantastic. Thank you. You can put your hand down because I'll ask you to do it again. If you can raise your hand, uh, if you see my screen, which should be showing the nuts and bolts screen. Perfect. I see a few hands. It's working. So you're muted. You're not on video. So don't worry about that. Use the Q&A tool, I think is also in that panel on the right. Uh, use that Q&A tool to ask questions as I go along uh, for topics that pique your interest. Go ahead and ask the question. If I, if I see it and notice it while I'm going along, I'll answer it in line with the webinar. If not, there's time at the end and I'll uh, answer it at the end. So I'll make sure to answer those if you put them in there. With that said, let's get into it. So microfiche digitization, scanning, conversion, all, uh, you know, Similar words, I mean, basically the same thing. You're taking hard copy fiche, those little sheets, you know, roughly four by six, depending on the specific type. If it's like a jacket fiche like this, roughly four by six, and you're converting it into an electronic format. And what most people will think of when they hear digitization or scanning is into a classic or what we call traditional TIFF, PDF, some sort of a digital file of that sort. So in a nutshell, you're taking a hard copy, you're getting it into a digital format. The different methods to scan, uh, there, the two that we would like to break it down to is outsourcing to a company like ours or do it yourself. A do it yourself, this is a, actually it's a scan pro. We used to actually sell these machines. This is a specifically microfilm here, but they have a tray here. You can scan microfiche. So you could buy something like this. There are also a couple other, a couple other companies that sell machines similar to this, um, small footprints, more based for like library usage or uh, researchers that maybe don't have large uh, collections they want to scan, maybe just looking at a few images here and there. But it is a possibility to purchase, rent, lease, whatever it is, one of these machines and scan your microfiche yourself. You can also get the what we call production level machines. So uh, the scanners that we use, those are quite a bit more expensive. But if let's say you're working in a you know, federal agency with 100,000 employees and just massive collections of microfiche, maybe that is part of your objective is to have your folks do it. It wouldn't be a machine like this. It would be something like we use. But again, that's if you want to do it yourself. We'll talk about some uh, considerations for doing that versus outsourcing to a company like BMI. The other method is outsourcing, which if you look over here, it's not the best picture. You'll see a better one later. But basically, this is one of our machines scanning a, uh, scanning a sheet of microfiche. So we do it uh, large quantities is what we're best at. This is more for smaller collections. Uh, we like larger projects. We can use our scale and our resources to really get that project rolling and get it into a very systematic way to scan your records, get them digital, and get them back to you. So here's the process. And again, this is our process. It's a high-level uh, kind of template. Of course, every project is going to be a little bit different, but this is the generic structure of our microfiche scanning process. And you'll see this note down here. If there's a little asterisk asterisk next to one of the, the items, it's because it's part of our M1, which is our milestone one proof of concept process. I'll go into that later, but just keep that in mind when you see that, I'll just call it star there. So you have the contracting, receiving the microfiche, and I will go into these individually. Transportation containers, tagging them, uh, the storage of the records while they're out of your hands, creating a job order, calibrating the scanner, you have the pre-scan, scanning, post-scan image processing, indexing, and then delivery. So that's the high level uh, structure of a 
microfiche scanning project. It will change depending on your specifics, your requirements, and things that go like uh, the types of fiche, how many you have, all that stuff that's going to go into it. But this is the high level basis that all projects are built around. And again, we will go into what these mean, the M1, uh, at the end of the, the, the base scanning process. So first, contracting scope work won't spend much time at all on this. But basically, before we get moving together, we have to have an agreement, which is typically going to include the scope of work, SOW, or you know, the schedule of work, the, the project scope, various names of basically what we're going to be providing to you. So it's going to say you're scanning it let's say 300 DPI, there are this many microfiche sheets, they're this type, you're gonna get PDFs, they're gonna be named this way. Everything that goes into what we're gonna be providing is this first part that you would work with our one of our account executives to craft that scope of work, which would then also become part of the contract or agreement. So before we move forward, we're gonna have an agreement of here's the price, here's the scope, here's what we're doing, here's the legalese and all the terminology about uh, timing, liability, you know, um, what's the word? Authorized folks signing it. Let's assume that gets, that that's already taken care of. We're not going to go into crafting the scope of work per se, but this is part of getting that project started. So it always starts with an agreement, a little handshake between us and you to say, great, we agree on what we're going to do. Now let's actually do it. So then we're going to receive the microfiche. This can be a couple different methods, but you need to get it to our facility. There is on-site there, there could be an on-site option. Uh, in my 12 years, I have not seen us do an on-site fee scanning project, typically because it would have to be a massive collection and the logistics behind it is quite extensive, especially with the machines involved and having the folks on-site doing it. So is it a possibility? Theoretically, yes, but I just haven't seen it. So we're gonna be talking about the, uh, the materials coming to us in this uh, webinar. So we'd have to receive the microfiche, you could ship it, use a carrier, you could drop it off yourself, uh, or maybe one of our folks goes and picks it up if it's more of a regional or a local project close to our facilities in Northern California. This is actually Bernard. He's our warehouse, uh, one of our warehouse guys and our primary driver. So you may see him coming to pick up your fish. But there are various ways we can get them. But that is, of course, one of the major steps is getting the fish to our facility so we can start the project proper. And one thing to note, all microfiche and microfilm and aperture cards, part of that microform family, they're all done at our Sunnyvale, California headquarters. So we have two facilities, one Sunnyvale, one a little north in Sacramento, but all fiche are scanned at our headquarters. That's where uh, all the machines for this, uh, this type of material are located. So we get the fiche. Then when we get it, they're going to be in some sort of containers, probably... Uh, they might be in banker's boxes. They might be in like shoebox size containers. We may send you some um, cardboard packages to load them, but whatever they're in, we're going to tag them when they get in here. So we know that, okay, we picked up 30 boxes. We get them inside, we tag them. We know these are your materials. They're going to have your name, the your client name on there, the job number it's associated with, our box number that we're using when we received it, the barcode to track it. So we want to be keeping track of this the entire time that we have it in our control. And these will be logged into what's called our uh, material tracking system, MTS, within our Unity application. So Unity, and I'll go into that a little bit later, Unity is an application we built ourselves. Now, we used to have some off-the-shelf um, software for project tracking, uh, executing projects and whatnot, but our team decided we could do something better. So we built our own that's really specific to how we run operations. So that's called Unity, which also ties to our billing, also ties to job uh, job order creation, ties to material tracking. So that's why it's you know, a unifying system, Unity. So MTS will track your material inside of our Unity application. So again, homegrown, it's not someone else's uh, software, it's our software. So that's, you know, for purposes of your information is not going to other people. That's something to keep in mind. This is our proprietary software that we use for our projects. But this information is tracked so we can keep, keep track of it throughout the project. Not to the individual fiche level yet, because that, would, that could be hundreds of thousands or millions of individual sheets, but at least the containers they were received in. So if you send us 50 boxes of fiche, and we get 50 boxes, they'll be tagged, and we know we have 50 boxes in our facility. So... While we're not actually scanning, there is secure storage on site, one of which is here, the restricted storage room. 
It's basically a, a secure room that only certain people can access to. That's why you have a, um, what do you call those? Like a, like a fob scanner. So we can uh, keep, we can designate certain people uh, permissions-based access to get into various rooms within our facility. It's kind of like a, a rabbit den where it used, the building was based around photography when we used to do a lot more actual photographing to create more microfilm. So there are a lot of little rooms in the building. It's not like an open space which actually is great for us because now each room we can secure and segregate off from other rooms depending on the project or what materials we need. So this is one of those rooms, restricted storage. We also have an on-site vault. Again, permissions-based access. Only certain people can go in there. This vault is also temperature and humidity controlled. So we're going to keep most of the film, fiche, and those types of materials in the vault. So while we're not prepping, scanning, or utilizing the fiche, they will be in secure storage. Now this is part of where the, I like to call it the handoff between sales and production. So your sales account rep, your account executive, they create the scope of work, there's contracting, all that. Somehow it has to get handed, it has to get handed off from being sales language to production or our, our project team language because there's overlapping terminology, but you know, sales and production or sales and operations, they do think differently, speak different languages in the sense of how things are described or written out. But this, within Unity again, this is what we call our SOP, our scope of project application, where the salesperson has to enter the service lines, which then the production team says, I know exactly what these service lines mean, and now I can create the project process flow and execute the project using this information. So here's an actual, it's actually one of mine. It was one of the smaller projects. And it was fiche, it was microfiche, uh, well, it should be fiche, but it's jacket microfiche. And so you're, we're going to create things such as the Salesforce opportunity. We use that for our CRM to track projects and opportunities. So there's going to be a link to the Salesforce opportunity that shows that it was approved internally by the project team. We, we classify projects based on the data on the material. So there's one, two, three, three CGIS, which is law enforcement, and four. Depending on the material of your uh, fiche, like HR records, student records, medical records, or maybe it's just public information like um, technical manuals or something, we'll classify the project and run it a certain way based on that classification. So this is essential for internally. So we make sure we track it and process it in the right way. So we're handling it properly. Milestone, I'll come back to that. But there'll be stuff such as what type of material, what's the, the price of either the unit or the project, what are we creating, this is PDFs, how we're going to index, how we're going to deliver the project. Everything's going to be in here and translated from sales to production. It'll go through an approval process and then the project team will start executing. Let's assume it gets approved, it goes through that process. This is also an actual project process flow. We just changed the name so we wouldn't show any client information. But this is, it was for microfilm specifically, but you can get the idea that this process flow is two, four, six, eh, 25 steps, this specific one. Yours may be 10, it may be 50, depending on the simplicity or complexity of it. But this shows where individual units are in that project and the steps they're at. Green means they're, they're processing fine, they're getting past. Purple and blue are exceptions and red means stalled for some reason, like a red flag. So our project managers that are running these projects will constantly check the process flow, see, okay, these are running fine, this many units, in this case, microfilm rolls, 800 of them, are past here, they're moving along fine. I need to check on these exceptions to see why they're, they're stopped. Maybe something on the material is different than what's part of the process flow or than what we saw early on. Maybe there's a plug in air, it could be anything, but they're constantly checking these to get that green to the right side. So I talked about the material tracking system where we have, let's say 50 boxes of microfiche and let's pretend that's 100,000 sheets. Once we start scanning the actual fiche and we know how many actual individual units there are sheets, we will see that this green uh, might say 20,000 fiche are here and 10,000 are here and 3,000 fish are in exceptions, whatever it is. But at that point, we will be able to track how many individual units. We, of course, need to know that because we want to know how many we're processing, but also it's part of the billing cycle. So we need to know how many we're actually scanning. But this is an actual process flow. 
and we will create a process flow for each project. Next, so we have the process flow, we're testing it, we're gonna scan the fiche, we're gonna calibrate the scanner. So there's gonna be a density check, not on every single fiche, but we'll take a couple of density checks to get calibrations for the project. And then we'll apply those calibrations, those settings to the scanners when uh, one of our operators is scanning your microfiche. So it's applied to the scanners before they start scanning because different projects, different fiche, different materials will have different settings. So we wanna make sure that based on what your requirements are in that scope of work, we're setting, the, uh, we're calibrating the scanner to get the optimal image. So again, this is one of those machines I mentioned, not like the typical desktop you might think of when you go to like a library or think of all, oh, buy a machine and scan it. Very expensive machines, but also you need to have the software to run it. You have to have a whole setup. Maintaining it can be difficult. So. It's a little different than the desktop scanners you may be thinking of. Now there's the pre-scan and scan. I'm gonna show a quick video, it's like 40 seconds long. It's an actual uh, scanner operating while the fish are going. So there are two parts to scanning fish. First is the pre-scan, which is, it's a different light setting, but let me go back to, I, yeah, let me go back a little bit. So the pre-scan is actually, oh, I should have had a picture there is capturing this title block. Like it, it's a different light setting because this is this is not see-through. It's like a strip of sorts. I mean, it's a little see-through, but it needs a different light setting to capture that information, which we will very likely use for indexing. So first there's a pre-scan that captures that, that scans up here, and then it switches to the setting for the actual microfilm portion of the microfiche sheet. So it's all part of that process, but the first scan is actually called the pre-scan, but I'm just including it in that video, not really calling, uh, showing a separate piece. Let's go to that scanning thing, here we go. So here's a scanner in operation. So we have operators watching these machines and yes, there is, uh, there is automation to it, but the reason you have to keep watching is you can see this hand, they have little suctions on it, but very often a fish will not grab properly or it'll drop off or it might double grab. So we have to constantly be monitoring these to make sure that it's scanning properly, not double feeding or whatever. Then you can see that pulls it off, puts it, one drops out, puts it on the sheet, uh, the, the platen there. And then it's gonna scan various rows. We can go from top left to right, then it moves down, scans the next row, moves down, scans the next row. So there is automation involved, but you have to be monitoring it because not only you want to make sure the physical microfiche are actually getting on there and captured. But uh, in that previous image, where you saw the, um, the monitor or the, the computer are getting captured while they're, they're being scanned. So it's kind of a live process. And our people are just constantly monitoring, fixing, adjusting, moving. And they're putting like you know batches of fish in there at a time, but you can't just leave it alone because it could miss a fish, it could not grab properly, it could scan and the scan could be wrong. Various things could happen. So you have to be monitoring these even though it is a semi-automatic process. Oh, uh, what do I, oh, Q and A. Oh, I, there are a few questions. Sorry, I didn't see those. I was looking at the wrong part. Let me uh, answer a few of these questions. What if, what if the micro is like a roll of old film? So that would be, uh, called a microfilm roll or reel. So this is specific to microfiche sheets that look like this, uh, but the machine to scan microfilm, I mean, it's a large machine, but it's not gonna look like this. It's more, there's like spools and little rotators and you put the, the film on there, it runs around very, I don't have a video of it right now. It's a different machine that's used for microfilm. Do we ever, do we ever convert microfilm? Yes, uh, absolutely, we love it. What size of micro would be needed to be an on-site transfer data? You'd have to be, if it was microfilm, at least probably 10, 15,000 rolls minimum for microfiche, probably a couple hundred thousand fiche minimum. It's just, it's a, lo a lot of logistics to move these machines, get the workstations set up, get the, not just the physical workstations, but setting up the processing, depending if it has to be on-site processing as well, not because... Some clients have asked for, hey, scan the fish on site or film, but also all the, the post scan processing, like the digital, the cropping and indexing, everything we talked about before, they also wanted that on site. So we couldn't even send the digital images back to our facility so our folks could work on them, uh, even just the digital method. They wanted that enclosed, encapsulated on site as well. So it really depends on the project. You'd need 
couple hundred thousand fees or at least tens of thousands of rules. Uh, we worked with the federal government. Yep, we have, still do. And have those securities in place. Yes, uh, quickly for security, we are a CGIS listed vendor, meaning uh, Criminal Justice Information Services is an FBI division and it's specifically around law enforcement material, uh, criminal justice information. So we're a CGIS compliant, CGIS listed vendor. We're NIST 800 TAC 53 compliant. So that was for the feds, basically certain security levels for the feds. They required various things, but we have worked with three-letter agencies and have security in place for that. And then we are also SOC 2 type 2 audited. And then, of course, HIPAA compliant and so, uh, some general other security um, you know, certifications and whatnot. But high level, federal government, yes, we can do it. Sensitive material, do it all day, every day. So if you're interested, of course, reach out. We'll talk about your specific project, but thank you for the questions. All right, moving on. Let's see, let's see. Post-scan image processing. So you scan the fiche, you have the images, but then there's the image processing after that. So it's not just the scanning itself, it's what you do with those images after. And in this example, this is what's called, you know, we scan the fiche, we capture it. And this is what's called cropping or framing. So when you scan this, there might actually be, you might get some border on there. Or there might be some overlap on the other image. But if you're getting like a PDF or something, you very likely don't want the extra border around that extra black edging or overlap of another image or you know, maybe the blip little image down there, that little um, mark. So cropping or framing is removing that. So it's just the, the original image itself. So that's part of post-scan image processing. There could be OCR, uh, basically applying text search. There may be specifically with Fiche, you might have mirrored images or reversed images or flipped images. We've seen some crazy Fiche where yeah, mirroring would basically be every image on here. If if this is right reading, I don't have a great example. I mean, I have like a tissue right here. You know, here's the image. Let's say it's right reading while you're looking at it. Imagine on the fish, they're all flipped this way. So the top part, the title is right reading, but all the images are reversed. And if it's every image, it's actually kind of fairly simple to flip. To be, okay, flip every image on that fish. But we have seen where just one of these rows will be flipped or two rows or images within a row, or maybe they're reversed and upside. It's just, you know, they can be, there are variations of this, but there are things you have to occasionally take care of in the post scan processing phase that you wouldn't even think about when you're just going, oh, it's just a feast, just scan it. So that's part of this. Uh, there's QA and QC as well. So quality checking, depending on the requirements, there can be some checking, uh, different levels of quality checking. And then after the processing, of course, is the indexing or digitally naming your files. The most simple is fiche level. So if this is that title strip, we may capture just word for word, left to right, top to bottom, what's on there, just as is, we're not making any changes. Or maybe it's, you tell us, all right, I want you to capture the date and maybe that's a, like a fiche number. So we disregard everything except date and fiche number. Things like that would be fiche level. So we're just capturing what's on that title. You may want file level. Newspapers aren't typically on fiche, but it's just an easy example where let's say they were on fiche and we would capture the every issue. So maybe it's nine or 10 images. We capture the issue and name it by the issue date. So we have to go to the images themselves, but we're not necessarily cap um, indexing every image. We're cap uh, indexing every file based on the, these 10 pages being an issue. And then you could do image level. So let's say this is an image and you want to capture every time there's a signature and say, okay, you know, what's the date of the signature? Uh, when was the date? And then who signed it? Something like that. So you may want us to go to every single image or we may be required to if there's no simple or easily identifiable way to tell, okay, this is a file. Like issues are pretty identifiable in newspapers, but if it's, let's say, student records and you don't have like a folder or some sort of flasher sheet, maybe we have to look at every single page to say, okay, here is the start of the file, but it requires some effort to do that. And indexing, besides the quantity of fiche, like you have you know, 50,000 compared to 5,000 compared to 500,000, different price ranges, and that's going to be a big uh, part of what your project costs, but indexing is typically the next most critical factor of your project because it's very simple, like just basic fiche level indexing. That's going to keep it 
cost effective. But if you wanted to go image level or something that requires a lot of searching and hunting for information or parsing of data, that can blossom your costs very quickly. So what I like to say to clients is uh, replicate what you have now, which is fiche level indexing. So based on the title, because if you have 50,000 fiche and cabinets, what do you do right now? There's some way you're finding these fees. Maybe someone calls and says, hey, I'm looking for my student record. You probably have in cabinets. So, oh, well, they're this last name. Here's the last name on the drawer. I pulled the drawer. I just flipped through. It's in alphabetical order. Oh, there's the name. So you already know how to get to these. And once they're in digital, it's going to be quicker anyway. Start there. You can always do more, just like cutting hair. You can always cut more hair, but once you cut it, you can't go let, you can't uncut it. So you can always spend more money after the fact and do more heavy or more detailed indexing, but replicate what you do now. Start with that building block. If it works great, if you try it out for a bit and think, nah, I need to do more detailed indexing. The images are already digital. You can always do more after that. And then delivery. As I mentioned, there's a traditional method, which you might think of TIFFs, PDFs, JPEGs, so on and so forth. Or if you're working with us, we have our digital real uh, secure hosted application. So if you wanted to use that, which many clients do, while we're doing the project, we're just loading the, uh, the images, data, the files into the application so you can access it as the project's going along, as files are loaded. Uh, that's one option you do. Some clients actually do both where maybe they want to access our hosted platform, but they also get a backup of PDFs, let's say, just to have on hand. So you can do a combination, but these are the two main methods, you know, traditional over here and digital real when you work with BMI. Another question here. I'll get back to that question at the end. All right, so I mentioned the milestone proof of concept process, which it's not really, I mean, we kind of consider a separate process when we're doing a project, but it's really part and parcel uh, parallel with the main project. And it's using a build, test, refine method, meaning we get your project, we have the, the SOPs created, so our project manager can start building the process flow. That's the build portion. But before, let's say it's 100,000 fees that you're scanning. Before just saying, great, we have a process flow, scan 100,000 fiche, we're going to test it. So we build the process flow, we're going to test I don't know, 10, 20, 30 fiche, depending on document types. If you have multiple types of fiche or multiple types of materials in the project, we'll test batches of those uh, pieces of the project, run it through the entire process flow to make sure our process flow works. It turns out how we want it to turn out. And then we're going to refine it by reviewing the M1 with our main project contact, let's say it's you that's on there, maybe get on Zoom, review it in digital real if that's what you're doing. We'll go over the indexing, the scanning quality, we'll bring up anything that we found that's like, hey, you said it's all jacket microfiche, but we actually found after card, so we need to talk about that. Whatever it is, we use this build, test, refine method to create that process flow, test our assumptions, and then refine it and get your approval before we move forward. So if we do the M1 and we've reviewed it, and you want to change something, we may go back and change it, may have to adjust the scope of the project, but we're not going to move forward with the rest of the project until we get your approval because we want to have confirmation that, yes, this is what you're expecting, you accept what we've created, and now we're going to move forward with the rest of the, with the, rest of the project. So that's the green light for both of us. Now I mentioned what to consider uh, for scanning. If you want to do internally, absolutely a possibility, but what resources do you have? Because you may have 10,000 fees. Like, oh, let's have some people do it. Okay, do you have the machines? Do you have the scanners? Yes, I have the scanners. Okay, do you have the people? Yeah, there are a few folks that uh, can maybe spend spend a little bit on it. Well, how long is it going to take depending on the machine? How often can your folks get to it? These are the resources you need to execute these projects. And when you think about, okay, I have to rent or buy my own machine, have people do it, which now they're doing something at their job that's not their primary job. So I'm paying them that for that anyway, and they're spending time. It can actually be a lot more uh, when you compare it to, oh, it's $10,000 for a project. I'll just buy a machine and it'll be free. But you have to think of the people, the, the resources, the, the time and people resources that you're going to spend doing that. So keep that in mind. Do you have the systems and software to execute as well? If it's just simple output into like a network folder, just putting on a thumb drive, maybe that's easy enough. But you have a lot of records. How are you going to process them? Where are they going to go? How are you going to how are they going to be accessed after? Who's going to run the project? 
And then of course, you're going to run into weird stuff with microfiche and the digitizing of those fiche. So do you have the expertise uh, from your from on your team to do that? Outsourcing, of course, the cost can be an issue, but it's that upfront versus long-term cost or spending, you know, the free time internally. It's like if my if my toilet breaks, could I and actually I'll go back to a real example. Um, a couple of years ago, a what's it called? A solenoid on my irrigation needed to be replaced. So I thought, oh, this seems easy. I'll do it myself. So I YouTubed a few things, went to the hardware store, got something, tried to fix it, was the wrong piece, watched more YouTube videos, went back to the hardware store, got another piece, spent time doing it, eventually fixed this thing on my irrigation. But I, then I look back going, why well, just spent probably two hours of my life, a bunch of YouTube going somewhere, spending money for the actual parts, one of which was the wrong part. I could just had my, you know, contacted a landscaping guy. He would have done it for probably half the price and been done in about 10 minutes. So it may seem like a great idea when you do it, but there's going to be a lot more. So the cost when I first think, oh, I'll pay the irrigation guy a hundred dollars. You think that's a lot. Oh, I'll just buy the $5 piece. But then comes all the spending of the time, messing something up, learning how to do it. It costs me a lot more than just paying the expensive guy to do it initially and being done. And then of course, if something goes wrong, you say, you fix it because you you did this. Security of your records. Yes, you want to be absolutely sure of the security of the folks that you're working with. I mentioned a few certifications and uh, things around security earlier, but always check on those. Ask for proof uh, that you know an external audit is always a great way to verify these. And lastly, you have to have the warm and fuzzy factor. You could have all the things in line, but if you just get some weird feeling about a company, yeah, you should take that into account. So have the warm and fuzzy feeling. You want to be comfortable with who you're working with when you're doing this project because it'll, it'll probably take a while to do it. And you're only, you should only be doing digitization once, especially if it's microfiche. So make sure you do it right. All right, questions. Let's see. Let me go back to that question. Uh, how long does it take to process a banker's box of information? Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure if that means fiche or paper, but... If it's paper, if it's one box, it's pretty quick, but it's not just scanning the box. There's preparation. There's building the process flow to actually create what this, you know, the client wants to create. If it's microfiche, that could be 59. That could be about 4,000 or so sheets of fiche, potentially. Um, that's like a small project in itself. That could be, you know, maybe one or two weeks for the M1, depending on the complexity of the project. And then you're looking about two to four weeks uh, probably closer to two, but giving my team a buffer, probably about two to four weeks to be done uh, once the milestones approved. So it really depends on what type of fiche or what type of material, the specs of your project, your timeline, what you need. So it's hard to say a box takes this because, well, what's required? And a lot of different things go into that. And that was the last question. Oh, microfilm. Well, same idea. That's about 90, 100 rolls of microfilm. You know, two weeks for an M1 at most, and then a couple weeks to scan it and process it. But again, it depends on the project. I have no idea what the requirements are, what's on it. Does it require a certain security level? Are we loading into one of your applications? Are we doing digital reel or thumb drive? All these things will come into play. So it depends on the project. I'll keep this open. So if I see any other questions, I'll uh, none right now. Okay, if you have more questions, of course, ask them, but if not, Here's my email, the simple version, will it be myimages.com? Shoot me an email if you have any questions or you have a project you're interested in chatting about. If you haven't already, just hold your phone up with the, the photo app open or the camera app and hover over that QR code. It'll bring you and then click the link. It'll take you to our newsletter sign up page. We send a newsletter out through email every other Tuesday. I think the next one's going out this coming Tuesday. It has new articles, new videos, upcoming webinars, recordings of webinars. Anything related to digital imaging that we're putting out, you'll be uh, you'll receive those every other Tuesday. That's all we send. So you're not going to be hammered with them. You can opt out anytime. So if you want to keep in touch or just learn more about digital imaging, uh, sign up for that and you'll get that information. I'll check one last time. I don't think there are any more questions. Nope. All right. Well, thank you for taking some time out of your day. Hope you got some good info from that and looking forward to hearing from you if you do have a project and want to discuss uh, working with us. Have a great day.